what are the applications of ai in health research i think that's the topic of today uh, so before going into the health research how we can apply ai i thought let's understand the health research cycle so that we know at each level of this health research cycle which are all the ai tools we can use again i'm emphasizing i am not dealing with all the tools which are available in that particular field i am only uh, explaining and showing hands on on the tools which i have used or which a few of my friends have used and found it useful but that may not be the best and you may find a various other tools which you can explore yours so the first thing is always identifying a problem or to find a research gap once you identify the problem you do a in depth literature review to understand what all is being done in that particular uh, problem then you set an objective then you choose the study design you design the methodology you collect the data you analyze the data you write the manuscript then after that you are going to disseminate your data uh, then the cycle will continue and you will identify some gaps in your study which will be picked by others and they will start uh, doing the uh, taking the research further so this is the research cycle so let's go one by one and we understand how we can use ai in this so the first very important thing is idea generation i think most of the pgs or when we were pgs my uh, uh, pg guy told me uh, deepthi you go find 10 topics of your interest and come let's discuss and you know uh, i am from a, a medical college where uh, we were not supposed much to research it was a rural medical college and suddenly i went into st johns where internship doing a project is compulsory and every intern knew about projects every intern knew about it and i used to sit there awestruck how they were presenting so nicely you know without any problem so uh, i did not have ai or even uh, for that computers was very difficult we had to go pay uh, 50 rupees 60 rupees per hour even if we had to Uh, browse something on the internet and st john's library was wonderful the people who are born before 1980s will definitely understand what i'm talking so throughout india many people used to uh, come to st john's to find articles Uh, journal articles and they used to take xerox and they used to use those uh, but thanks to all this uh, uh, technology now it is all available at finger so what ai does is it will identify the patterns and the trends in the big data it cannot independently create its own theories but it will help you to understand this concept so it is a data driven prediction and hypothesis refinement which this will do through which you can identify the data now how to actually do it okay so basically how you do literature review you go through the journals search a lot of journals read one by one and you will get to know what is the search gap otherwise you will talk to some person who is good in that particular field a research scholar you ask them can you list me what are all the problems you know and then they may and another one is our google scholar that is what we all been using from 15 20 years to find our uh, research article so in that one easy way to find your research article is you write your research interest then use the boolean operators a and d and you can write any of these terminologies like promising results in the inverted comma or these preliminary results or requires deeper understanding you know something like this if you write then you get a lot of articles which has spoken about that so let me open google scholar so what i'll do is now how do you find these phrases okay so how do you find these phrases so what i can do is i can go to chat gpt okay i can go to chat gpt so i'll go for the regular 3.5 chat gpt okay and i am going to type i am trying to find the research gap in my research field what sorts of phrases are used in peer reviewed papers that i can search for example i'm already i already have our promising results and preliminary results show so when i put this command it gives me a lot of phrases like you know these are all the phrases further investigation is warranted more research is needed then further study should address so what i will do i will take one thing okay so further investigation is warranted so this is what i am going to take so now i am going to google scholar and my 
area of interest is disability and rehabilitation. Okay, so I will say early developmental delay. Then I am going to put and then I am going to paste. Okay, so now I am going to search. So once I search, it is going to give me the articles where it is spoken about what needs to be improved. Okay, so when I read these articles, I will get to understand what is already done and what needs to be done. And it's preferable to go for the recent articles. Articles so that you can, you know, uh, look at the timeline and say since 2024 or 2023, okay? And then you can find what are all the things which require. So I can start working uh, or I can decide that as my research topic or research gap and start working. This is one easy way for people who want to search for a research gap or a research topic. Now, I have the and another way and another way uh, to do that is, so that is one way, that is a preferred way where you can find. Another way to do is, I can ask chat. I have typed the questions and kept because I'm really slow in typing. I take a lot of time to uh, uh, save time. I have done this, okay? So I can ask chat GPT directly, list the areas of interest in my field. Oh, my field of interest is early developmental delay in communities, okay? So I'm going to ask, list the areas of interest interest for research in early developmental delay in the community. So when I ask, it is going to tell me what are all the areas I can think of. Early identification and screening, risk factors and protective factors for early developmental or developmental delay. What are the intervention strategies? It is also telling me, you know, researching on these, these things uh, will definitely help. Okay. So I can also decide on the topic like this and find the research gaps and I can uh, finalize on one of the top. This is one way how you can uh, get your idea generated. So once your idea is generated, you know, this is the topic. So I wanted to screen for early developmental delay in community. Okay. So this was the research topic I select. Okay. Now the next topic. So I have put literature review and discussion together though discussion comes at the end because uh, what the tools which we use for both literature review and discussion are similar. Okay. So that's why I have put both the things together. So we know that PubMed, like yesterday when I checked, the total amount of citations and abstracts of biomedical literature, which is there in PubMed is 36 million, which is humanly impossible. And many a times we leave out some important uh, uh, article when we search through uh, Google and we just select the first four or five articles. You know, that's how it happens. So as humans, it is very difficult to go. So traditional literature searches specific keywords words and you may not uh, get those things in those articles. However, natural language processing improves search accuracy by enhancing the keyword relevance. So you can, uh, before starting the literature review, what I will do is I want to get the, so before starting the literature review, the best thing is to get your uh, outline for literature review. I think your uh, PG guides also tell the same thing. First, get the outline for your literature review. And uh, this is a very good, uh, chat GPT is a very good tool to get the outline for your study. So you can ask this question, give the outline for review of literature on community early developmental delay screen in India. Okay. So now it is give me, giving me the outline. It says first say introduction in that background and concept significant of early developmental delay. So it gives you a lot of things what all I should write in the literature review so that you will get to know what are the things you need to look for in the literature review. Okay. So this is one way of creating the outline. If you want it for a journal and if you want a shorter a literature uh, review, you can also ask that. It can give you a shorter literature review and these things will be beautiful to write it in your uh, dissertation to go in this order. So you can get your outline for your literature review by using chat G. So now you have outline. So next is you have to start looking for your literature. So is uh, chat GPT good for literature review? With my experience, direct chat GPT is very bad for literature review. You know, it writes beautifully. It gives one, two, three, four references and it will also give the references. If you go and search for that references in the internet, it is dummy. It will, it is so uh, auto-creative. It will automatically create its own references, which is not available. So uh, as of today, 
today a uh, direct chat gpt is not a good tool for literature review the two good tools which are excellent for literature review are one is illicit the other one is consensus so i want to demonstrate these two things to you all so uh, so first let's go to illicit so once you press the illicit.com it will ask you to log in uh, you can log in or you can uh, log in through your google also so when you open the illicit you get it like okay so when you open the uh, illicit you get it like this it will ask find papers ask a research question you know extract data from pdf this is the free form which i am showing i have not subscribed to this so obviously any ai tool the free form uh, you will not have all the options available but in the uh, subscribe form you will find a lot of options so i want to ask this question for illicit i will ask find the research articles on early identification of developmental delay in india because that is what i want to find out okay so i will ask it's taking time while it's taking time i will demonstrate the consensus for you okay so consensus census again is another beautiful platform where you can uh, uh, get uh, i mean you may not get the summary of articles but uh, you will get to know uh, which are all the articles which you have to uh, refer okay so now the same question i will ask for consensus so once i ask these questions it has come up with a literature okay so monitoring tools for early identification of children with developmental delay in india and update okay so here they mentioned the prevalence so it is coming it also gives us study uh, snapshot but these are all uh, credentials like only if you go for premium you can act okay then developmental delay among children below 2 years of age a cross sectional study so it is giving me the literature of developmental delay so i can i can go to this study and i can read further now if uh, if i want to uh, cite this i have to just press on this it will give you citation in all the formats you can just go for bibtex if you are using your zotero or mendeley so bibtex is a good format to uh, uh, save and you can use this for citation you can just copy text and paste so here you will get all the articles uh, which are there in this so you can select which are all relevant for you and you can take it now another important uh, thing is you can also export like you don't have time to read you can also export this in .csv and .ris format and you can uh, read it further if you have a paid version it will also help you in writing okay it has a copilot it will also help you in write so another importance of uh, consensus is you can ask certain questions like you want to find out like i want to uh, i want to have a, a question like the screening of children for early developmental delay in community by health workers is it f you know i want to know about it. so i can ask such question okay or i want to find out uh, is vitamin d supplementation effective in reducing migraine episodes or is consuming a lot of pantop or pantoprazole causes any gastrointestinal disorders you know any question which pops in my mind i can ask this once you ask such questions you get something called as consensus summary and a consensus need okay so the consensus of all the articles which are which this consensus has analyzed it says that 80% says that yes that uh, healthcare worker training uh, can definitely uh, improve the screening of early development delay in community however there is 20% of the articles which are saying no okay so there are seven papers analyzed and it says these studies suggest that developmental screening by health work effective in identifying delays referring children to early intervention and improving access to services especially in vulnerable population okay and if you come down you will get also get the access to those articles okay? so it will also say what type of study is it okay then uh, uh, in what type uh, uh, and uh, If, if anything is there how many citations which year was it published you know uh, highly cited uh, then you can also share this with others it will also say whether this article said that this particular decision yes you know one more article said possibly and one more article unknown you know things like that so it's a very beautiful uh, platform and just with the free access you can uh, understand a lot of things to come to this consensus on a google or some 
other platform is really very difficult. So consensus is a wonderful tool and you people can definitely use it. And similarly, I will use it also for discussion. Like for example, in my study, I got the prevalence of uh, early developmental delay to be 11%. Uh, discuss this result comparing with the other study results in India. Now, if I say that, it will give you the different results and what is the prevalence of developmental delay in those arts. Okay, so you can keep going one by one and you can what you want and you can start using. So this is how the consensus works. Okay, so now let's see if uh, Elist is cooperative. I don't know, Elist is not a cooperative. It was very cooperative morning. Uh, uh, let me uh, revisit this after some time. But in Elicit, uh, uh, it has a very good advantage because you can also add a lot of things like where it was conducted, what was the sample size, what was the study population, what was the intervention done, what is the limitation of this study. You know, all these things Elicit will answer. 